without Star Trek The Next Generation. I might not be here. And, and that lies at the very center of what I have to tell you now. Jean-Luc Picard is back. Iconic actor Patrick Stewart has announced that he will once again portray Jean-Luc Picard in a new Star Trek series. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay Hot off the heels of this awesome news, we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to refresh your memory of the famous Starfleet captain. So sit back and relax with a cup of Earl Grey tea as we dive into the history of John Luke Picard. But first, make sure to subscribe to Universe where we got you covered for comic deep dives, TV breakdowns, and movie reviews. Born in Labar, France on July 13, 2305 to Maurice and Yvette Picard, Jean-Luc had always dreamed of joining Starfleet. At a young age, Picard and his elder brother Robert spent their days tending to their family vineyards. Now while he was born and raised in France, Jean-Luc and the rest of his family spoke English with English accents, due to the French language having become apparently obscure by the 24th century. Counting coup, Mr. Data, the French language for centuries on Earth represented civilization. Indeed. Now with that said, Picard can at least speak basic French. Enchanté, comme t'es merveilleux de vous voir ici. Incroyable, vous êtes parisienne. Growing up, Picard was raised under what we would call ancient traditions for that time period, with avoiding anything that his parents deemed unnecessary technologies. And without the blessing of his family, Picard chose to leave the family vineyard and apply to Starfleet Academy. Now, Picard would fail his first Starfleet entrance exam, and upon admission, he was met with numerous difficulties during his cadet career. Picard would credit Academy groundskeeper Boothby with helping him develop a mature and stoic attitude. His name is Boothby. Now, you tell him that you and I were friends. Now, when I was there, he, he helped me listen to him. Now, years later, Picard would flourish, developing a lifelong passion for archaeology and became the first freshman to win the Academy Marathon in April 2323. Among Picard's close friends at the Academy were Donald Varley, Corton Zweller, and Marta Botanides. Shortly after graduating from the Academy, Picard's Starfleet career damn near ended abruptly during a layover at Starbase Earhart. Picard and his buddy Zweller would wind up in a bar brawl with a group of Nausicans after rigging a game of Domjot. The ensuing fight would leave him with an artificial heart. <laughs> the fight would change him forever, making him more willing to take risks and stand out from the crowd. In 2333, Picard would serve as the first officer aboard the USS Stargazer, which he later commanded after the captain was killed on the bridge. Fast forward to 2364, Picard would take command of the USS Enterprise D, and this would mark the beginning of a long and infamous relationship with the entity known as Q. Morning, darling. Now, Q is a member of the Q Continuum, and in the pilot episode, Q would make Picard a representative in the trial charging humanity with being, in his words, dangerous savage child race. Throughout all seven seasons, Q would challenge Picard and the crew's worthiness as a species, and on one fateful occasion, his actions would directly lead to Picard's first encounter with the Borg. My people encountered them a century ago. They destroyed our cities, scattered my people throughout the galaxy. They're called the Borg. Protect yourself, Captain, or they'll destroy you. And this would lead to the season three finale, The Best of Both Worlds, where Picard was kidnapped and assimilated by the Borg to serve as a bridge between humanity and the Borg. He was renamed Locutus of Borg. This was a game-changing moment for Picard and the Star Trek franchise as a whole. I am Locutus of Borg. Resistance is futile. Your life as it has been is over. The fallout from the encounter would provide backstory to the film First Contact and give fans the unparalleled Benjamin Sisko from DS9, whose wife would die in a Borg attack while Picard was still Locutus. Fun fact, Stewart actually fought to try to keep Picard as a Borg for a few more episodes beyond the Season 3 finale. He thought it would be more compelling to keep Locutus around in Season 4 than just restoring Picard in Part 2. Now, the very last time fans would see Picard on screen would be in the 2002 film Star Trek Nemesis, where he would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Romulan-made clone of himself played by Bane. I mean, Tom Hardy. 
Patrick Stewart stunned Star Trek fans across the world when he announced that he would return to the franchise after a 16-year absence. As reported by CNET, the announcement was made during a Star Trek convention being held in Las Vegas, where Stewart appeared on stage to reveal his involvement and discuss his decision to return to the character. Stewart later posted a lengthy statement on Twitter, saying that this is an unexpected but delightful surprise to play Picard again. According to the Star Trek Discovery Twitter account, the new show tells the story of the next chapter in Picard's life. In June, Alex Kurtzman, who had worked on the recent Star Trek movies and the TV show Star Trek Discovery, signed a five-year deal with CBS Studios to release several new Star Trek shows. The series focused on Picard is the first to be confirmed since the announcement, and the show will air on CBS All Access. Oh, real word, sing, walk, sing. His nose should pant, and his lips should curl. His cheeks should flame, and his brow should furl. His bosom should heave, and his heart should glow. And, and his fist be ever ready for a knockdown blow. Thanks for watching, everyone. Let us know in the comment section what your favorite Picard moment is. And until next time, keep it tuned to GameSpot Universe. Bye bye.